The Ritual is a cold, dark, heartless horror film about friends and the tragedy that connects them. When an event goes horribly wrong and a character directly contributes to the death of one of his best friends, but does it in a way that but does so not really in a direct way, but more th so through the act of cowardice and self-preservation. He finds it difficult to live with himself, and as the truth comes out, and as the tensions rise, and as the attitudes swing one way and then swing another, his friends are finding it increasingly difficult to forgive him for it. When they decide to go on one last hurrah, where they hike around an area where their friend would have loved, they do it in memory of him. Of course, as you can imagine with this being a horror movie, at one point, everything goes horribly wrong. But it doesn't go horribly wrong quickly. The Ritual is an incredibly slow burn kind of movie. A lot of the horror is in the visual subtext. A lot of it is hidden back in the deep reserves of the Norwegian forests. It's subtle, and it gives you time to focus on the main thing that the Ritual really does do, and that is is the tragedy of guilt. When it comes to guilt, I tend to view it in one of two different ways. First is unjustified guilt. This is the kind of guilt that you apply to yourself regardless of your station in life. Suppose that a friend went through something horrible, and in some roundabout circumstance in your mind you feel like you can in some way connect your tragedy to theirs, and in some way kind of come up with this idea in your head that if you had done just one thing different, that that bad thing wouldn't have happened to your friends. But yet, at the end of the day, there was nothing you could have done about it. At the end of the day, if circumstances had played out perfectly, maybe you would have had some role in it. But the world isn't perfect, and the world doesn't revolve around you. To me, unjustified guilt is a sign of narcissism. It shows us things that we don't want to admit about ourselves, and it shows that we're constantly trying to shove our own ideas into something, and it's showing that we are constantly trying to push our own personality into something that really doesn't belong to us. The second kind of guilt, and the guilt that the ritual explores very effectively, is justified guilt. What if your actions could have not only prevented a bad thing from happening, but what if you were in the vicinity? What if you were there? What if you experienced the bad event with somebody? And through your own faults, and through your own act of being human, you failed to stop that horrible thing from happening. And as a result, you constantly live the rest of your life wondering what could you have done differently. Could you have stepped in? Could you have said something? Could you have called somebody? Could you have done anything different? And odds are, if you had done anything different, well, either you would have shared the same fate, or you'd still have your friend and nothing bad would have happened. This justified guilt plagues our main character, Luke, and in some ways, our other characters in the film as well. But I'd like to focus specifically just on Luke, as the film does want you to experience the majority of this runtime through his eyes. Luke is completely eaten up by guilt. He wakes up in the middle of the night in a cold sweat, imagining the night that everything went so horribly wrong. He spends most of his waking moments haunted by the memory of what happened to his friend, and even more than that, he lives the rest of his other time haunted by the memory of what he didn't do to help him. It's this constant back and forth of knowing that he should have done something, but also knowing that everybody makes mistakes and that not everybody can really, for lack of a better term, know what they would actually do if they were in somebody else's shoes. After all, if somebody was holding a gun to somebody's head, can you honestly say that you'd be the first person to jump up and try and stop them? A lot of us would like to think that we are, but until we're actually in those situations, until we're actually there experiencing it, and until we actually see that playing out in front of us and we see what could possibly go wrong and understand the concept, the absolute depressing concept of this life being snuffed out right in front of us, 
we really like to think that we would be that courageous hero, that we would be that shining knight in white armor, that we would be the ultimate hero and stop the people and stop all the badness and stop all the ugliness. The very harsh reality is, my friends, that odds are we would be just like Luke. We would duck and cover. We would sit there. We would watch it through the slits in our fingers. We would watch it peering around the corner of a store aisle. We'd wait and we'd watch and we'd hope that something would happen along the way, that somebody would step in and intervene, that something wouldn't go wrong, that somebody would just stop. But most of the time, they don't. What the ritual shows us about ourselves is just how erringly human we all are. A lot of horror movies like to explore the tragedy of being human. A lot of them like to explore what makes us who we are, but they do it in a way that's usually not as nuanced and usually not as introspective as a film like The Ritual is. This movie isn't about body horror, it isn't about gore, it's not about blood, it's not about really anything other than Luke, his struggle, and the visual subtext of what the forest and the ritual really represents to him. At the end of the day, even though Luke escapes from the forest, and even though he walks off and he looks back and sees everything that he escaped from, we, the viewer, knows that he doesn't escape from anything. He may still have his life, but he's lost everything else. And that guilt, that never-ending, justified guilt, will stick with him to the end of his days. And if you can in any way relate to what Luke went through, and if you in any way took something away from this film, and you understood it, and you were haunted by it, then odds are, you haven't yet escaped your forest either. And if you have, it will be with you forever.